Hey guys, welcome back to Steve Basinger Fishing. So today is tournament day. Sorta. It's a little Wednesday night jackpot tournament that we're going to do. Now I want to warn you guys right now, it's stupid windy and my uh, adapters for my external mics haven't came in yet. So the audio is going to be garbage. You're not going to be able to hear anything. There may even be music instead. So uh, we're going to, if we catch them good, uh, stick with me. And at the end of this, I'll tell you guys how we caught them. But let's go try to win something. First, you want to go ahead and get the scale out. Now go ahead and get the camera ready. I ain't a big one. I thought he was bigger than that. Here, let, me, let me see the scale. I'll go ahead and zero that out. Without the yeah, without that. Are you kidding me? Turn on. I got no power. I got nothing on. There's no batteries in this thing. Are you effing? Hold on, me? hold on, hold on, hold on. Hold on to this fish. Oh. Or you can drop it on the floor. Yeah, we'll do that. It also lives there too. And I'm gonna get back there to where I'd use my scale, but I'm pretty sure I can't do that. But I got batteries in here, so we're okay. If they're the same kind of battery. Yeah. Set up for failure immediately, man. Team train wreck, let's go! Hey, uh, thanks, dude. <laughs> you, uh, you cost us. <laughs> All right, so there's that. That's the timestamp thing, so whatever. So me and the whole fish. Because they can, and then it's, they gotta get the number in too. All right. Which, if you can't see the number, it's okay because apparently they can zoom that in. Oh, fish. Turn the fish loose a little bit, can you? Or no? Yeah, just the whole. Yeah. Oh, okay, that's good. All right, and. Okay. Cool. Uh, you can review it. You can see what you think. Yeah, that works. All right. Cool. All righty. Thank you, buddy. Sorry that took so long. Now, where'd the. Where'd that thing go? Right there. 152? 154? I already forgot what it was. Okay. On the board. On the board, on the board, on the board. different kind of grass damn it netter oh Ooh, that's a close one <laughs> An old Chatty McChatterson, huh? That'll work. Yeah, they're biting. Knock it off. Might, it just might. Thank you. 
Come on, power pole's drop. That's what I'm talking about. got five. It's a little one that our smallest yet, but we got five. Now it's right off the channel. That used to be a place where I'd catch my better fish, you know, punching or frogging. Dude, I tell you what, that little, uh... Oh my God. Yeah, that'll work. I believe that's going to cull one out. Uh, Dude, look how I got him hooked. He's hooked outside the mouth through the nose. Look at that. Uh, that's a weird one. All right. I bet those guys just came through here. Okay, guys. This is actually well after the fact. This is a few days later. I tried to film an outro after the tournament, but uh, we fished till dark in that particular tournament and there was no camera light. So anyways, I know the intro was really short. It didn't really explain a ton, but this is a small little uh, three hour Wednesday night jackpot tournament. And when I say small, there were 21 boats on a 100 acre lake. So that's really a lot of boats on a little bitty lake like that. That's a, that's a lot going on. So to be able to catch fish with that many boats, I thought was was pretty impressive. Uh, in this tournament, you don't bring in fish to the scales at the end of the day because of some Nebraska laws. So instead, everyone, when you check into the tournament, you get a set of scales, and then when you catch a fish, you weigh it, you take a picture of everything, and then write it all down. And then at the end of the day, uh, you turn everything into the weigh master, and then they decide who you know who wins that way. But it's your biggest five uh, total weight of your biggest five. Um, and lo and behold, we won the damn thing. I, I couldn't believe it. We didn't have a massive, ba massive bag. We had 9.96 pounds with five fish. So not huge by any means, but we won it by two pounds. Second place had 7.96. So with that in mind, we really, you know, we kind of hammered them a little bit. Now I hope what you were able to see in the video kind of showed it, but the way I caught them was punching. Punching mats. First time I've ever won a tournament punching mats. I've caught them in tournaments doing that a few times, but I've never, it's never been the total key in how I won. But what I caught them on was the uh, Gambler Why Not. See, it's a real, I'll take it off here and show you guys. It's a real thin, streamlined profile. However, it does have a meaty, I'd say main section here. The shaft, if you would, is meaty. And you want it like that so it will still hold a hook really well because it's a very soft bait. But when you start flipping in and out of mats and you pull the bait out, or a lot of times it gets clumped up on grass, you're kind of popping it real good to get it out of there, it starts to drive that hook point through. And the more you drive that hook point through, now the hook starts to become stuck on things. When you have that meaty profile, it doesn't, or that meaty body, it doesn't do that so bad. But at the same time, you want the streamlined profile because when it goes through, when it goes through those mats, you don't want a bunch of appendages and stuff like that hanging off of here because all that stuff gets caught on there. Um, I, I know Matt, the guy in the back of the boat, he started out flipping a uh, some sort of a creature bait. I believe I know what... Hey, you know what? There it is. He left it in here. I don't know who makes this. You guys probably do. But he started out flipping this. And you see, it's a good meaty profile. Holds the hook well, but you got all these little appendages sticking off of it. And it wouldn't uh, it wouldn't get through the grass right. Uh, actually, once he switched to something else, I don't know what he was throwing at that point. Once he took the put on something that didn't have appendages, it went through. So that's where this why not comes into effect comes into play this thing was made for punching through mats i mean you see it, it almost just goes through like a bullet uh these little things they don't really flap around that much um and then i had it on 
a this is a one ounce tungsten weight tungsten bullet weight that I had pegged get a little more line out here that I had pegged with a bobber stop uh, I should have put two on here really when you put one on here when it goes up and down the line multiple times it starts to wear out and it just doesn't hold as well so I should have put two on there and then the hook is a three yacht trocar tk130 this is i don't think they make a tk130 anymore by the way but i think i know they make something similar trocars are my favorite straight shank flipping hook if i'm in any cover that i can get away with a straight shank which definitely i'm punching i'm always going to use a straight a straight shank uh i go with this tk130 for sure now when it comes to punching mats just like with the bait you know you're looking for that streamlined thing i go with a three yacht Whereas a lot of guys might go with a four or five out because they want that bigger bite, they want that bigger hook. Uh, I think it's counterproductive when it comes to flipping mats because it's more metal that's hanging off the side and it makes it harder for that bait to get through there. So again, the three out, smaller, smaller, everything stays streamlined uh, and it'll get through that mat. As far as the rod, uh, I used two. Uh, they were both Denali's. The one I used the most, which is the one I have here, is a, a, a Covert Light 711 punching rod. So it's extra heavy, real beefy rod. Uh, the other one, oops, about to backlash everything here on accident, was a, a Lithium, Denali Lithium, also 711, also a punching rod. Um, and then Fast Reels, they're both, uh, well, this one's a little loose. I think the other one's a Shimano, might have been a Sitica, but they're both like 7. 0.1 or faster reels uh, and 50 pound cigar flipping braid a lot a lot of guys like to go to 65 I would if I was around much heavier cover like hyacinths or something like that but it's it's typically fairly soft grass like milfoil and pondweed around here so you, you're fine with 50 pound and I'm not catching giants I mean dude I had five fish it didn't go 10 pounds they're not giants around here so as far as the tournament went down I could see many, many boats out there. Uh, actually, I didn't see another boat or team out there punching mats like we were. Everyone would either be just off the grass, kind of fishing the stuff that was further out that you can't actually see with the naked eye, or some people were straight up fishing full-time summer patterns. And these bass, like, they just kind of finished up spawning in the last few weeks, and they're on their way moving out. So I'm sure what I was catching was the last group of fish kind of moving out. Um, but what I really had going for me was I was fishing for bass that no one else was fishing for. Uh, other people, if anybody fished as shallow as I was, they were throwing a frog over the mats. You could see frog trails everywhere you went on the lake. Um, Matt tried a frog, uh, for a good bit. I want to say he had two blow ups on a frog and that was it. So I wasn't feeling a frog the whole time just because I knew everybody was probably throwing one. Figuring out how to fish for bass that everyone else is not fishing for is the name of the game most of the time. Uh, I don't know where all you guys are at, but here in Omaha, and I know it's like this pretty much everywhere, uh, our bass are becoming the most pressured they've ever been. Especially here during the COVID stuff, everyone is out fishing. So these bass are seeing a lot of lures. So it's a really good idea, no matter what lake you fish on, no matter how pressured it is, to try to target some fish that everyone else aren't fishing for. Now, that might mean fishing an area of the lake that you just don't people see people fishing or fishing deeper than you see people fishing most of the time. In this case, I was fishing much shallower than everybody else, but I was also presenting a lure in a manner in which no one else was doing. And I think that was probably the biggest key in getting bites. Okay, guys, I hope you guys really love this video. I had so much fun doing it. it this, was, this was a blast for a little three-hour video. I do have my mic adapters in now, so the next time it's windy, I'll be able to have microphones on, and it won't just be garbage audio um, <laughs> like this one kind of turned out to be. And I'm sorry for that, but they will be better in the future. Uh, anyways, guys, if you did like it, don't forget to hit that thumbs up button. Uh, subscribe if you like seeing these videos because I'll put more of them out. Until the next time, we'll see you guys on the water.